Welcome into another edition of the Hops and Spirits Podcast. It's Flavorful February, and we've already had some fun talking whiskey and beer. We talked uh, making wild, crazy beers with Derek DeFranco of Mirror Twin Brewing in Lexington. And then the guys from Starlight Distillery talked to, to us about how uh, the barrels uh, can play a integral part in the flavoring of whiskey. But now here on Flavorful February, we switch things up and go to the recipe side of how uh, whiskey can get on, get some of those unique flavors. And we have with us Ben Pollock and Greg Biaggi of Foundry Distilling in Iowa. Ben, Greg, welcome in. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much for having us. Now, um, before we get started, uh, just so everyone knows, Greg is the distiller production manager. Ben is the assistant distiller there. Uh, they lead a, a good crew that makes some amazing whiskeys. I had one the other other night, and we'll get to that here shortly. But I always like to start off everything with one tough question. It's a fun icebreaker. Since you know Valentine's Day was just recently, I want to know what's your favorite candy? Ooh. You know, I think uh, I've always been tried and true for a Reese's Fast Break. Oh, that's usually my go-to candy. Not necessarily for Valentine's Day, but <laughs> <laughs> you know that Reese's Fast Break. I, I would say Crunch Bar. Cool. Simple guy, Crunch Bar ties me over. Yeah, I, I like both of those, and I, I I just love you know a Reese's cup. You put them in the fridge. And to me, there's nothing better than a cold Reese cup uh, any any day. Maybe maybe not today where it's uh, freezing cold outside, of, uh, of, <laughs> but uh, pretty much yeah. any other day. <laughs> yeah, hope it's okay down there. Uh, so now to get into a little bit of the, your guys' background, uh, Foundry Distilling uh, got its start, so to speak. Uh, previously, its owner had started another um, uh, kind of whiskey uh, that many people might know as Templeton Rye. And that's Scott Bush. Can you guys give us kind of just an overview history of Scott and then how Foundry Distilling came to be? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, uh, well, Scott is from Wall Lake, Iowa, and he has family uh, lineage dating back to folks that made Templeton Rye back in the good old days, I guess you could call them. <laughs> um, that's, uh, he wanted to progress in making something, uh, you know, going the entrepreneurial route and pursuing whiskey in a, a sense, especially in the mid-2000s that people had not yet in like necessarily full on craft distilling uh, sense. So, however, in uh, about 2016, he wanted to pursue something different and making a world-class distillery right in between West Des Moines, Iowa and Des Moines, Iowa. And that ultimately became Foundry Distilling Company. It started out, you know, with looking at the building that we're actually sitting in as a whole, built in 1899 as a former Union Pacific Rail Line uh, repair foundry. So that's where our name comes from. And, uh, you know, utilizing the exposed brick and being able to welcome people down and, you know, pursue the different avenues that we enjoy, like uh, Brewster Alliance and making your own whiskey. I was going to say, and it, it seems like y'all are in a, in a cool facility because you're not, there are a few other tenants in that building, is that correct? And it's just kind of a neat area? Yeah, yeah. Next door we uh, have the hall, uh, which is a German-style beer hall. Uh, and then next to them on the far side of the building is the kitchen, which is a kitchen that serves food to uh, the hall patrons. So, I mean, I, I love that that history and kind of what you y'all are being able to create there. Because, uh, you know, as we get a little bit into it, uh, people will see why it's, it's so neat. Because you guys do take a different approach to how you guys make whiskeys and bourbons and things like that. Why is that? Was that Scott or is that kind of just the team wanting to do things a little bit different? Um, that would, uh, I would say definitely, uh, Scott wanted to pursue something different after, uh, leaving Templeton Rye. Um, he noticed that, especially in collaboration with, uh, big breweries, one in particular, Boulevard Brewing Company, uh, in distinguishing barrel-aged beers. They used to send a plethora of barrels from, uh, Templeton Rye over to Boulevard to do, you know, the rye on rye and whatnot. And, a lot of the innovative sense when it comes to the beer whiskeys that we're producing comes from that, being able to take um, distilling a beer, you know, taking it a step further. I was going to say that that sounds really, really unique to me because uh, you're in a, in a sense, you're flipping the age old uh, process of where people would take your barrels and put beer in them. And you're kind of doing the 
opposite. There's a little bit more to it than that, uh, but that's kind of the gist of some of the things you all are doing. Yeah, yeah. The one thing that we really appreciate with working with the, the breweries from around the nation is they take such great care uh, in putting the time, the effort, and especially the quality into their mashes. Uh, and so to be able to partner with them and have that high quality mash brought to us to distill and make the, make some collaborative whiskeys um, really kind of hits the nail on the head with Scott's vision of making a world-class whiskey uh, in a world-class distillery. Yeah, and uh, piggybacking off of that a little bit in the innovative approach as well, um, the Make Your Own Whiskey program. You know, Scott wanted to pursue something where people can come down and essentially produce their dream whiskey with us, where they uh, you come in, propose a whiskey that they thoroughly enjoy or want to create something new. We've had individuals do barrel-aged rums, barrel-aged gins, uh, plethora of different bourbon whiskeys and whatnot. People can come down and we work with them one-on-one -on -one and producing their dream whiskey. Uh, I, I love that because you don't hear that very often. And I feel like that's something the quote-unquote smaller guys, the craft guys can do. You guys can take you can kind of flip things on its head and, and step outside of the, the box. And uh, you, you mentioned a little bit, you, you collaborate with uh, the, the brewers from some, some big boys. Um, how, how did that come about? Because, you know, like you mentioned, most of the time it's them buying the barrels or you send them barrels uh, to age their products and to make a, you know, bourbon barrel stout or a, you know, rye barrel, whatever, or, you know, but you guys kind of do things a little different. How did that, come about was anyone hesitant to do that or were they all basically like yeah let's give this a shot you know approaching each brewery has been different don't get me wrong but a lot of the network that scott had built especially before starting foundry and then of course after uh foundry came to fruition and we opened up for production you know it's it's it was pushing the industry in a unique direction that i feel like a lot of the breweries were certainly interested in and I know when we signed on, we were very interested in seeing, you know, uh, my favorite beer becoming a whiskey. You know, <laughs> yeah. Not for each beer, you know. And and how did you guys, you know, but kind of going away from a few of the topics that I had, I've, I'm always interested in how did you all get into the the business? Because you know, I don't I, like I tell everyone, I don't remember classes, you know, growing up or this being on my potential job list of going into being a distiller or a brewer or anything like that. Yeah, well, uh, my, my path into the industry is not uh, typical. I was actually teaching eighth grade U.S. history in Colorado Springs uh, up until a couple Octobers ago uh, and moved back to Iowa, where I'm from, for some family reasons. And uh, it just happened to line up right where I was trying to apply for teaching jobs. COVID hit last year, uh, and hiring new teachers was definitely not of the highest priority for schools, which is totally understandable. Um, and so I actually just came in here on a whim uh, with my bride and got a tour of the facility and Greg uh, sat with me and chatted for a while and said, if you ever want to help bottling, we could always use some help. So I helped bottle a couple times and then we started making hand sanitizer to uh, supply the community during that time of need early on in COVID. Uh, so I was making hand sanitizer with them and then uh, after all that was said and done, Greg and Scott just kind of said, hey, if you're willing to stick around and, and become a distiller, learn the trade. We, we would love to have you. Uh, thankfully, Greg has more of a legit background in the chemistry <laughs> side of it. Than I do. But uh, that, that's my background. That's how I got here. I, uh, we have a, this is a quick little story. We have a private barrel client that whenever he comes in and he's always, he's always like, Ben, you won, you won the lottery. You, uh, you get to drink whiskey every day after. <laughs> teaching kids not to discourage teaching by any means but i don't know it's just a pretty goofy way to look at it <laughs> uh, no i, I mean I, I find that kind of unique you just never know i mean a lot of people you know they're in one line of work and they just show up one day i mean i talked to uh nicole austin who's down in uh, at george dickel and she just b before she got into the industry she was in chemistry and, and stuff like that went to king's county in new york just knocked on the door and said hey i want to want to learn and want to help so i mean Hey, it happens however it can happen, right? Yeah, that's right. Right on. I, uh, yeah, as, as Ben alluded to, I have, a, I have a degree in chemistry from Drake University, a university just pretty much up the road here. 
And uh, I actually had my foundation in working at a, another brewery in town that we now work with in the Brew Distiller Alliance called Confluence Brewing Company. And that was where I first got exposed, you know, to what it meant to produce um, both, well, well, at that time, a beer and whatnot. And it thoroughly interested me in seeing the passion for, for everybody in the production of, you know, something that can sit on the shelf and, you know, bring people together. Same is true for when I heard about working at Foundry. Uh, my uh, close buddy of mine, he actually was in a seminar where Scott was speaking, and they needed they needed help, and they needed young interns, essentially, to hop on and help out. And luckily, I was selected to be the brewing distilling intern here, and through the process of having several mentors and just really building the repertoire for both column distillation and pot distillation, I lucky enough to be a distiller here. I mean, do you guys just sometimes look back at your career paths and go, man, how did I end up here? Because this is awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, all the time. All the time. Hey, nothing wrong with that. And and I guess another kind of follow-up on that is, were you both always, I mean, when you were legally allowed to enjoy it, uh, whiskey and bourbon fans? I mean, I grew up with my dad. My dad always had Makers, Glenn Levitt and Templeton Rye on, on a shelf at home. And he wouldn't drink it every day, but he would fancy himself a, a bourbon or a scotch or a rye every now and then. And um, and he was a big wine wine fan too. So I kind of grew up with an appreciation for the spirit so that when I turned 21 and uh, was able to start stocking my own shelves, I of course gravitated towards Glenn Levitt and Templeton and Makers first. Um, and then I had a buddy that I met in Colorado that was st just starting to get into whiskey as well. And he had um, basically everything I didn't have when it came to whiskey. And so we just kind of piled our two, two stashes together and got a good variety uh, of experience from that. And uh, I just grew an uh, appreciation for it ever since then. Yeah, mine, uh, for... My first exposure to, to bourbon whiskey in particular was always Maker's Mark. And I want to say for the longest time, I would always gravitate just towards Maker's Mark until, you know, coming here and really seeing the, the differentiation and so much complexity and flavors for every which whiskey. Um, yeah, my dad in particular, um, he only ever used bur well, Maker's Mark bourbon uh, for cooking in general. He was always more of a wine gentleman, red wine gentleman. Uh, so... I definitely was able to have a little bit more than maybe he <laughs> hey we, we we won't tell we, we we won't tell on you on that one and, and you kind of mentioned it you you grew up kind of in the within the brewing culture uh working at one that's now a partner with with foundry uh talk a little bit about the brewer distiller alliance because i think that's a really cool project that y'all do and exactly how that came about yeah so once again it's a little bit harkening back to when uh the Scott Templeton ride, barrel aging beers and whatnot. However, how it progressed was once again, people were through Scott's network and through now our network, reaching out to individuals, brewers and whatnot and saying, once again, what a, would you like to see your most popular, your flagship beer become a whiskey and, uh, you know, collaborate and market it as such, you know, with both entities supporting it as this collaborative brand. Um, in particular to some of the recipe nature of how we do it. Um, since this is a distilled product, we always request, you know, use, um, essentially what we request is make an imperial version of what they anticipate for the beer so that we're ensuring that, you know, we get the, the best quantity output distillate in one. And how does, like, I mean, do you guys make the recipe there or do they kind of, in a sense, send it to you, like kind of pre-made? Like, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, the, the brewers definitely, you know, they know their flagship beers better than anyone. Uh, and so how a lot of our uh, recipes go is they make, as Greg mentioned, an imperial version of whatever beer we are wanting to work on. Uh, and then they ship it to us via tanker truck, unfermented, and we pump it into our 8,000-gallon fermentation tank here, pitch our yeast here, begin fermentation process here. And then we can use that tank right in line with our uh, 21 tray column still. And, and uh, you know, I got to try the Midnight Ritual uh, from uh, uh, Boulevard, which is their uh, unfiltered wheat that you all turn into. 
uh, a whiskey. And and I must say, I, I had it Sunday night. I meant to send you all the note a note about it, but it was the weir- weirdest thing. And I mean that in a good way because you know if you're used to smelling you know nose in a bourbon or a whiskey, and then you you get that one, you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't smell exactly like anything else I've ever smelled before. The the notes are completely different. And, you know, I taste it and I'm like, okay, I kind of get, get, you know, maybe some banana, things like that. And then I would take a sip of the, the unfiltered wheat from Boulevard and literally they just layered perfectly. Like it was the weirdest thing. I told my wife, I'm like, I don't even know how to explain this because I feel like they just, it's, you can tell they're stepbrothers or <laughs> half brothers or, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Cause it was just a wild ride. Like it just kind of blew my mind. Yeah, it's definitely been intriguing to see, especially um, where I can see some people saying, you know, how different, how unique each individual beer can be, you know, if we're doing two stouts and whatnot. What we have seen in particular is both, you know, the care and attention that each brewer has desperately put into each one of these beers, but also that they are singularly unique from one another. No no two of what we're producing from these flagship beers are by any means the same. It's been actually probably one of my favorite instances in this in this career path of seeing, you know, the unique differences in each, even though it's minute. And and you guys do yeah, a, work with a good bit of, of different breweries and, and different styles, right? Yeah, yeah. We work with uh, brewers from all over the nation. I, I mean, you mentioned Boulevard. We're working with uh, Stone Brewing in California. Um, Left Hand Brewing in Longmont, uh, and then a number of Iowa breweries as well. Uh, we recently just started to grow the amount of Iowa breweries that we're working with and doing kind of one one batch, a couple barrels, uh, just to, you know, cast our net far and wide and really get as many different beer styles and, and beers going for, for specifically Iowa fans, not just everyone. And and how has that gone? Like, I mean, uh, is there a difference? I mean, are you guys getting more on the wheat ales or are you getting stouts and IPAs? What what kind of styles are you guys getting from everybody? You know, I would say majority of the whiskeys we have made of these malt whiskeys, the beer whiskeys we made so far have leaned towards IPAs. But we've had several breweries also pursue, yes, like we said, stouts. Um, less on the wheat ales, except for, of course, uh, unfiltered wheat. Um, we've done some Irish reds, uh, not to be confused with Irish whiskey, but the starting <laughs> beer was Irish red. You know, there's a big, big difference there. Big difference there. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely all over the place, you know, and each individual brewery has their own favorites. You know, they have each have their own flagships. So we're also very open in terms of being flexible if a brewer really wants to pursue one beer we don't we don't push them on it or anything like that we want to make a the best collaborative product possible and, and it seems like y'all are doing that because like i said the the one sample that i had of the midnight ritual which is the collab with boulevard was great um and it makes me look forward to seeing what what else comes down down the pipe uh to, to go a little further in depth into the recipes obviously you you're pulling their product up to you all um, from there, how does it work? How do you guys do things? Because I know that you barrel age it for a couple of years. How does the process go once it hits your your all's house, um, and then you guys have a full full fledged um, responsibility of it? Yeah, we so we'll you know as we mentioned, we'll get the wort, we'll ferment, distill, um, and then we barrel age in thirty gallon charred new American oak barrels uh, for about two years, uh, and then. I mean, then it's just a waiting game, of course, as the hardest part is with any whiskey is getting that to the, the perfect age for that whiskey itself. Um, and then all that while we collaborate with the brewery uh, to come up with a pretty sweet label design that really kind of captures the story and the collaboration that we're working on. Um, coming up with you know tasting notes as it comes to maturation, coming up with that final proof where that whiskey is just at its perfect, uh, perfect alcohol percent um and then it's you know trying to get it in as many as many hands as possible for everyone to taste some of the awesome stuff that's coming out and also yeah i wanted to note that these are these are in 30 gallon barrels so they're a little bit smaller than a 
what we would like to say, you know, the common macro distillery 53s. So that's why they're able to age a, a hint faster. But also to note that these barrels, when we're, when we accept one tanker truck from a specific brewery, that is one of four. So we will anticipate actually outputting or netting 130 gallon barrels or so of this specific beer collaborative malt whiskey. That's also with the stipulation that there's a possibility that down the line, the brewers can reaccept those barrels to be able to barrel age the exact same beer or another beer that they're interested in doing to take even the whole process another step further. Uh, and has anyone uh, take it, taken you all up on that? Because I, I think that would be really cool to see see what happened on the, the, the other side, so to speak. Yeah, We've done some very, well, we've, so far we've done some confirmed small batches uh, or a couple barrels sent to Stone Brewing Company. Um, I'm really excited, really looking forward to what, they're, what they got in store. As well as we, sell, we sent all the initial batch of the Midnight Ritual, the Boulevard Unfiltered Wheat Ale whiskey barrels right back down to Boulevard. So... Stay tuned. Uh, I like that. I always like a nice tease. Um, now, now, I guess that the other thought I have on this is how do you guys know that these recipes are quote unquote going to work out? Because, you know, a lot of things you got to kind of test and, and so forth. And it's not like you have the unfortunate side of whiskey. Well, the fortunate side is it tastes better when it ages a little longer. But the unfortunate side is you don't always know what you're going to get, um, so to speak. It, you know, you have an idea, but you never know exactly uh, what it's going to be like. Yeah, I mean, and, and you kind of said it, you, you really don't know until until you know, which is the unfortunate thing. But we, we feel uh, extremely confident, again, knowing the, the amount of care that each brewer puts into each mash and uh, the time and effort put behind all of these recipes that we are basing these whiskeys off of. We know that you know, we're starting with good bones um, and pretty quick, even off the still, uh, those flavors are representative of that specific beer. Um, I mean, I can think of one stout in specific that kicked off the still, and we tasted it, and we're like, holy cow, that is that is a stout right there. As weird as that sounds for white dog distillate to taste like a stout, um, it does. And so we, we know what we're starting with is quality. Uh, the barrels that they're going in are quality. And uh, as we've sampled and tasted you know, a few months down the road, a year down the road, uh, it's it's just gotten better and better with age, just like you said. And then you, you guys talked about this a little bit beforehand, and you, you also do your make your own uh, whiskey program, and it is exactly what it sounds like. You, like you said, you you talk you basically people can come in and almost try their hand at it. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's definitely one of the coolest aspects of what we're trying to accomplish here. When we can have somebody come off the street and say, you know, I like this whiskey and wait, I, I'm able to make it too. You know, I'm able to s sit there with you and be able to produce my own with a custom label, custom engraved barrel, two, well, two barrels actually. The entire process comes with a 30 gallon barrel and a five gallon barrel. So roughly netting 180 bottles of whiskey of your own branded whiskey. Um, it's really, you know, to be able to have people come in celebrate whiskey for us to work with them and uh you know produce a quality product i mean uh, to me that 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 goes back to what i said earlier of this is something really only craft guys can pull off sometimes or seem to be willing to try and why, why did scott and, and you all want to do that because i mean not everyone does that and it's a, it's a process it, it takes time it's it's not like they're going to get it the next day i mean why, why go down that route I mean, it's really putting the, you know, being able to give the master distiller shoes to uh, a whiskey fan. And we've had, you know, people come in and say, you know, I've, I've just, I, I run this company and it's our 50th anniversary and I want, you know, X whiskey recreated with our label on it. Pretty, you know, cut and dry, straightforward, um, just as a, as a celebratory gift to clients or to coworkers or whatnot. And then we've had, you know, individuals come and say, you know, I, I'm really interested in pushing the limits of bourbon. Uh, we've had someone propose a seven grain whiskey with uh, quinoa as one of the grains. Um, so it gives uh, whiskey fans an opportunity to um, just really kind of push the boundaries of, of where whiskey has gone and, uh, you know, be, be the makers of, of their own special unique whiskey that 
that they get to say they played a key role in uh, I love that. And, and I mean, to me, that, that is how you get people really hooked in on whiskey even more. I mean, to have that chance is something special that not too many people are really ever going to get to do. I mean, they might get, go get to pick a barrel, uh, but to actually put something in said barrel is a totally different experience. And then uh, before I ask my, my last question, uh, w one other one I want to ask is you guys don't just do these malt whiskeys with the beer and, you know, the, the whiskey program. What else can people expect if they ever are able to get out to you all and visit? Sure. Well, of course, we have our, our foundry vodkas, our foundry gin, our foundry rum in particular, but also our um, Trinity whiskeys. We have done some first edition and now coming up on our second edition whiskeys of, you know, our four grain bourbon, our uh, single malt whiskey, and our five grain whiskey, which is uh, a little bit of oak character in the end there, which is definitely okay. one of the more unique ones that we have made. And then where where are people able to pick up quote, any of the bottles that you all produce, whether it's the Brewer Distillery Alliance or just the ones that you all make that are your own, uh, you know, straight from you and no one else? Um, well, of course, we, we love having people down. can get everything here at the distillery. Um, in the Midwest, uh, I would say Hy-Vee's, Casey's, uh, Fairways, Come and Goes. Um, and then for our Brewer Distiller Alliance, we uh, have in the past sent you know, a share to the, the brewery's location. Um, so, for example, Midnight Ritual is sold around the Kansas City area, around Boulevard. Um, so if we're doing a brewery that you're a fan of, uh, look for it around that release time around that brewery. Yeah, and in, in particular, since there is a there's a uh, there's an upcoming list and whatnot, another little tease. Sorry, Jonathan. Um, mm -hmm. Check out brewersalliance.com if you're really fine tuned into seeing what we got cooking. Hey, and I took a little peek the other other night, and you guys have uh, quite the list coming, um, and I, and I can't wait to see see how those turn out. And, and my last question for for you guys, Greg Ben, is. Um, What's next for Foundry, and is there anything that you can for sure tell us when it's coming? We got some, uh, we got some upcoming Iowa Brewers Store alliances coming up very, very soon. One in particular coming out late March, so that's going to be our next upcoming release. It's a very limited batch made with uh, Blanc Fatale, uh, Blanc Fatale um, Belgian Ale from Peace Tree Brewing Company here in town. And then another one coming up, Confluence Brewing Company's Des Moines IPA, Des Moines Pride, uh, coming up later in October. Is there anything else you got? No. I mean, if, if uh, yeah, if you have time, check out BrewDistillerLions.com. Uh, if you want to make your own whiskey, we're, we're always down to expanding our private barrel collection. Uh, head over to FoundryDistillingCompany.com and uh, shoot us an email, and let's, let's make your dream whiskey happen. Well, Ben, Greg, I, I really appreciate y'all taking the time to talk whiskey. And like I said, that, that Midnight Ritual sample that I had was kind of so different, but so good. And I, I am sad that I only have that, that small sample, but uh, I, I will enjoy every drop of it because, like I said, it was just a cool ride because you just never knew. I never pictured what a beer would taste like as a whiskey, you know, and not just a barrel age something. Uh, you know, so like I said, y'all are doing some, some, some really cool things and, and people need to check y'all out. Well, thank you. Thank you thank again you for having us on. It was our pleasure. It was a lot of fun chatting with uh, Greg and Ben from Foundry Distilling there in Iowa. If you have not heard of them, which could very well be true, look them up. Foundry Distilling, they're out of Iowa. They do some really cool things. Like I said, the beer whiskey is, is some amazing stuff. And, and the one I had, like I, I said <laughs> several times before, was really cool. And you need to drink it side by side with the, the beer because that's a, a cool experience uh, to have. Something else that is really cool is our Drinking Buddies Monthly Giveaway Club, and you could win this month for February seven different whiskeys, uh, sample size that is 50 milliliters, uh, from various styles, ages, and companies. They could be yours, but you just got to sign up to be part of our Drinking Buddies Monthly Giveaway Club. Go to any of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Hop Spirits, all one word, 
click the link in our bio, follow the directions. It only takes a few seconds and you'll be entered to win not just this month, but every month that you are signed up. Last month we gave away some beers from our beer fridge. This month we're giving some stuff from our bourbon bar. Who knows what will happen in March. So don't wait around. Sign up for our Drinking Buddies Monthly Giveaway Club. Also, don't forget to check out our 60-second highlight that drops every Sunday night on our social media pages like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. We highlight a different product every month or every week, excuse me. Last week it was Cascade Moon Edition number two from Cascade Hollow down in Tennessee, better known as the home of George Dickel. Told you a little bit about that. We'll have another new one this Sunday. They come out about 8 o'clock Eastern time, so check that out, like I said, on our social media and YouTube pages. And don't forget to check out our friends, One Sip Beer Review. They're on Instagram at One Sip Beer Review. They do near daily beer reviews, some cool giveaways, and they have a lot of fun. And don't forget our friends, Dads on the Deck Podcast. You can find them where podcasts are available. They're also on Instagram and Facebook as well. Remember, if you can, give it a try. And until next time, cheers, everyone.